Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Wednesday catch-up. Some time ago, I mentioned that I was thinking about going to buy a little ultrasonic cleaner for cleaning small parts of steam engines. Uh, I've got a carburetor and bits of a little engine I'm trying to restore, ideal for cleaning that. If you're a man, in fact, one of my patron subscribers, a lad called Thomas Williams, had a one delivered from one of the well-known mail order companies, and the one they delivered to him was damaged, the plug was damaged. So they were going to send him another one and told him just to keep the, the damaged one. So what Tom was kindly doing, he changed the address and they've sent the brand new one to me. So I've got a brand new little ultrasonic cleaner to have a bit play with. I've ordered some ultrasonic clothes as well. It all arrived this morning. So I'm going to bring that in the workshop, have a little look, see what we're going to do with that. Once again, Thomas, thank you very much. It is much appreciated and I'm sure it'll be put to a lot of good use. In last week's Wednesday catch-up, I did a little bit on centre drills and a little bit on spot drills. Now the spot drills I've got came from Banggood and they were sent to me called spot drills and it's been pointed out by more than one viewer that they're not spot drills. They're stub drills, little short drills. They look like spot drills but they're not. I was in an engineering place um, the weekend and I says, have you got a spot drill? And the lad gave us a brand new spot drill. So I'm going to show that to show you what a spot drill actually looks like and that is quite a big difference. Right, these are the drills in question. That's a centre drill. That one there is called a stub drill. Obviously a short stubby drill. This one here is definitely a spotting drill with CSO on the box. It's a really nice drill, extremely sharp. It's got a much sharper point on than the ordinary drill. You can see it there. I'm going to put it in the lathe and give it a go and see what it cuts like. It's really, really rigid. It's got cobalt in it. It's very heavy. I'm going to put the drill into this AR32 collar chuck, which I use on the tail stock of the lathe. It'll probably stop in here all the time. Put it right in so it's nice and short, as short as possible. So we'll get as least deflection as possible. I use this chuck quite often to hold taps because it does get a much better hold than an ordinary Jacobs chuck. Uh, off cut a metal steel bar. I'm going to square the end up first. Very slightly below centre height that. Do the new tip in there as well, but I've purposely put the drill chunk in so that the fruit of the drill is at the top, which means that the Martian snot will be guided exactly where it's needed. And that really is like a knife throw butter. So that is the proper spot drill. We'll put an ordinary drill in behind it. First class, very happy. You'll see me using this spot drill all the time now. I'll just leave it in that chuck. Then we can use it on the lathe all the time. And I can always take it out and put it in the milling machine. What that will be good for is drilling out broken studs. Starting to drill holes on broken studs. I've actually got some. Well, I've got to get some out and I think they're going to break. But that is a spot drill. Right, this is the little unit. I've put some warm water in. I've put the right amount of cleaning chemical in. That's the stuff I got. It doesn't take much. It's got a little measuring thing on the lid. This is what I want to clean. It's a little carburetor. 
all the small parts like the, the little needle valve and the little float valve I've put into this little little ball that you get to keep things in, keep them safe. That goes into there, then the carburetor goes in. See it is quite dirty. See what sort of result it gives. It's quite simple, it's got a temperature. Control temperature setting on there and it's got time. It's set at a minute at 10 minutes, 56 seconds, so we'll just press start and see what happens. Making buzzing noises. You see we're starting to gurgle and bubble in there. And so if things are burbling and guggling, we'll come back in 10 minutes and see what sort of result we've achieved. Right, we'll lift it out. Right, it's definitely had an effect on these. There was a lot of that white corrosion in there, that's all gone. That little pin was seized, it's frayed off. Same with the choke, that's started to move. But obviously once longer, it's only been in there five minutes. All the little bits in here are starting to come up nice and clean. So I think we'll give it a little bit longer. But well, basically I think it's going to be quite a useful bit of kit. Once again, Thomas, thanks very much. I really do appreciate this. Once again, time to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do, because the 100,000 is looming very, very near. Anyway, thanks for watching.